Alright, welcome to part 2 of our play as tutorial. In the last part we covered all the downloads we would need and also set up the files so we could easily do the rest of the process. And in this part we will do all the modeling that we need to do in order for everything to work out perfectly. First things first, go ahead and click off from this little menu. And then we're going to hit A twice to select everything in the scene. Go ahead and hit the delete key. Then click on delete. Then we're going to go over here to the little globe in this menu and navigate down to environmental lighting and go ahead and check this. That will allow us to be able to see what we're doing. We're going to go up to file, come down to import. My Neptune model will happen to be a .fbx file, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then we're going to navigate over to where our download is. You may have to extract your model from the zip file if it was in a zip file. Go ahead and select your model, hit import, and you should see it import. There is a good chance you'll have a skeleton with it, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We can take care of that a little bit later. For now, I'm going to show you the different views. We have wireframe view, which is going to be a very, very, very important view to you, for you to use as you're modeling. It gives you the see-through view where you can see all the edges. We also have a solid view. And we have the material view. This is the one you're going to like to use for when you're texturing. If you hold shift while clicking down on the mouse wheel, moving your mouse will allow you to pan the screen. If you just if you just click on the middle mouse button, if you just click on the middle mouse button, it'll allow you to orbit. And if you scroll on the middle mouse button, you'll be zooming in, in and out. A couple other things. I recommend having a number pad as I will allow you to navigate a little bit easier. By pressing 1 on the number pad, you will snap to a front view. 3 will snap to a side view. And 7 will snap to a top view. By pressing 9, you'll snap to the opposite of whichever view you're looking at. And 5 will toggle the orthographic and non-orthographic views. Non-orthographic will allow you to see things exactly as they are, as if they were 2D, while orthographic will allow you to navigate into items as well as see how things are underneath. You can also use 4, 8, 2, and 6 as arrow keys as they would be shown on the number pad. All right, now that we've got navigation covered, we can go and select our model. You select with right click rather than left click. Then we go down to the bottom and hit edit mode. So if we look at the top, we can see the number of faces and the number of tries that our model has. For awkward at time, we're going to want our tries to be about 1,300 at max due to memory restrictions. To get our model to that number of tries, sometimes you can just go down to the bottom and click on mesh, clean up, and then decimate geometry, which will give us this little drop down where you can adjust the number to lower the number of tries that we have. This can be extremely destructive sometimes, and in this case, where we go down to 1300 tries, our model looks very, very torn up. This can be very inconvenient when you're trying to do texture editing because sometimes it just doesn't want to quite align the way you want it to. So the alternative option is to actually make your entire model all over again. If you happen to lift click the screen at any point, we can reset our cursor to the center by going down to Mesh, Snap, and Cursor to Center. So place our cursor right back to the center, and if we come over to this toolbar and hit Create, and then we choose, for instance, a cylinder, it will bring in a cylinder for us to edit with. You can adjust the number of vertices as well as radius, depth, and various other things like position. As you're editing, it's nice to know that you'll have this little spot right here where you can switch between vertices select, edge select, and face select. From here, we're going to start editing our model. By pressing Z, you can switch between solid and wireframe view. Pressing C will give us a little circle that we can use to select things. Pressing G will allow us to grab and move our vertices around. 
Z will snap that movement to the Z axis, Y will snap it to the, X, to the Y axis, and X will snap it to the X axis, as you would expect. Another thing we can do is select a single vertice and then hit Control plus to select more of the vertices around it. And if you want to get rid of those vertices but not lose them entirely, we can hit H to just hide them. And don't worry, those are not gone forever. As I said, just hit Alt-H to unhide everything. I'm just going to go and start moving things around, making them look nice. Alright, if we go and select a face and hit E, we will be given this option to bring out a, sp a section. However, I don't like how this is going, so I'm going to restart and bring out a new, a new cylinder. And I'm actually going to begin with the leg. Once you have something selected, you can also press S to change the size of those things. Once again, you can use X, Y, and Z appropriately for those items as well. When doing the knees, make sure you have one round of edges around the top of the knee and one round of edges along the, top, the bottom of the knee. The reason for doing this is that it will bend more naturally when you put it into the game. All right, I got a pretty good model for my leg. I'm going to go and start working on a boot now. Once again, same process. Create a cylinder, use E to extrude it, and S to resize or just move the vertices around as you wish. Alright, I've got a pretty good boot and leg. I'm going to go ahead and select the entire thing and hit Shift and D. This will duplicate it, and by hitting X, I can move it along the X axis to exactly where I want it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the body. Still all the same process, use E to extrude, S to size, and of course G to grab. You can also use these little hands on this cursor to move things around as you want. It is also a misconception that you need to have all these parts connected in order to work, but that is actually wrong and you can do it without connecting the items. In fact, this is how I save a lot of tries around the arms because instead of, instead of connecting the arm to the torso, I can just have a separate model and have less tries. Alright, I don't really feel like doing the hand, so instead of actually creating a new hand model, I'm actually going to use the decimate option to reduce the tries on the hand. And here I am going to actually duplicate this arm so I don't have to redo it all over again. If you press S, snap it to the X axis, and then type negative 1, you'll invert the model for the opposite side. Alright, working on the hood now. This actually turned out to be one of the more complicated areas. 
but with a bit of effort you can get this done just as well. Keep in mind, you won't be able to make everything look perfect because it is a model for a very, very old game that didn't have quite the same power as our consoles today. Now I'm going to create a plane, and I do recommend doing this as a 6x6 six six grid. It'll give you a little bit more definition and maneuverability with your face. Select the bottom half, bring it over, and we're going to select the top half and bring that over to the top. And then from here we'll go vertice by vertice to get it just about where we want it. Don't worry about the sides of the face too much as we can take care of that in a little bit in just a little bit of time. I don't want to remake my hair, so I'm going to also decimate that to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm also going to redo these just to make them look a little bit nicer. Now this being said, we are going to want to go into orthographic view and connect all the vertices so that we don't have any holes in our model. This can be done by selecting three vertices and then hitting F to make a face. If you need to further reduce the number of tries in your model, you can use Alt M to merge two different vertices together to create one. Alright, I feel pretty good about the model so far, so I'm going to go and make sure that everything is selected. Then I'm going to go to Mesh, select Faces, and then go to Triangulate Faces. You can also just hit Ctrl T for this. Also, we can go and delete our old model, and if we look at the top, we can see that our tries have gone down significantly.
So that's going to be all for this tutorial. As you can see, our, our model does not have any good textures, so we will have to work on that in the next tutorial. But for now, that's all, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode.